Hello, welcome back. Today I'm reading a story called The Witch Trial. Uh, it's a fantasy story set in uh, medieval time, and it's about a woman accused of witchcraft, but she does have magic, and whether or not she chooses to use that magic in some interesting ways is what this story is all about. A figure covered with a hood dragged Amber through the mob. They shouted liar and spit at her. The hooded figure forced her to a wagon headed for the center of the gallows. Pieces of rotten lettuce flew at her face. A stone struck her on the side of the head. Blood ran into her ear. She twisted to allow the blood to drop on the bottom of the wagon so somebody would have to clean it. Small victories. The wagon jerked to a stop and Amber flew forward, crashing chest first into the driver's bench, the worst of the impact absorbed by her diaphragm. She gulped air. Nobody would care if she died right there. She wasn't sure how much she cared either. You're next, witch, a boy bellowed. If they'd stood beside each other, the boy couldn't reach her shoulder. What had she done to him? His father smiled approvingly and tapped his son's head like he was rewarding a dog. Hey, kid, Amber said. The crowd roared with anger. Cardinal Adam had spoken on the platform, but Amber hadn't heard him. The crowd yelled their agreement to burn witches. Jessica stood on the gallows with a noose around her neck. Jesus, no. Jessica had nothing to do with what happened. She'd only rushed in to help. The mob would kill her anyway just to make sure no more witches lived in their shithole of a town. At least they weren't burning them alive. Cardinal Adam continued preaching from the gallows. He muddled his words and spit a lot, but the crowd was into him. Amber couldn't understand what he was talking about, and what she did understand didn't make any sense. The crowd roared in agreement, but she didn't think they understood either. The crowd was in a bloodlust. Amber studied the crowd for a target to drain the life out of so she could use her magic. First, she'd have to get the gag off her mouth so she could whisper the words. Although Cardinal Adam was the obvious choice, the guards would kill her the moment they saw the color go out of him. Most of the people were farmers hoping to find the solution to a disastrous crop season. Unfortunately, everyone thought they knew what to do. Find witches and kill them. That's what God wanted. I was trying to help, Jessica said. Her knees buckled so hard Amber thought the gallows might be collapsing. You did this, her eyes locked on Amber. Tell them I came to help. I had nothing to do with killing that family. You tell them, witch. Amber nodded, trying to send her regret through her eyes. Gag first, target second. Only she didn't have a target. Old men barely gave enough energy to light a torch. Children gave the most power, but she wouldn't hurt a child. Do you deny knowing Amber was a witch? Cardinal Adam asked, pointing at Amber. Yes, I deny it. I deny it, Jessica said. Which, Cardinal Adam said, looking at Amber, is it true? Amber knew he didn't care about the truth. What angle was he working, making the people think they'd given them a fair trial? Tell them, Jessica screamed. A small puddle formed beneath her legs. She came to help, Amber said. The boy was already dying of his disease. Disease, Cardinal Adam's voice cracked like thunder. You mean witchcraft. You cast spells on the boy and killed him. No, Amber said regrettably. Freddy's mother had brought Freddy to Amber asking for help. The boy had been sick for weeks and the doctor couldn't help. To save face, the doctor admitted to the church that the boy died from a curse by a witch. Freddy's mom had offered her energy to Amber to save him, but Amber's attempt to save him had failed. The lump in his chest had spread beyond the energy his mother could provide. His mother died in the attempt. Maybe I deserve to die. Do you see what witches do? Cardinal Adam's eyes lit up. She'd answered as he'd been hoping for. They lie to save themselves, despite irrefutable evidence. A dead mother and son who we all love dearly. And the testimony of our own city doctor, still, they will lie. 
God demands justice. A vein nearly exploded in Cardinal Adam's head. He kicked the lever and Jessica dropped. The noose caught her fall, mercilessly snapping her thin neck before she choked. Amber bit down on the gag, tears falling down her cheeks. Rotten fruit struck her. She closed her eyes, ignoring the hateful crowd. If they knew the truth, would they regret their actions? Or are they so blind in faith they truly believe God wants this? Amber scanned the crowd. It would take a young person to escape her bonds and disappear into the crowd. No older than thirty. Plenty of people would do. The hateful little boy would give her an abundance of power. Why did it feel so wrong? They wanted her dead. Is it so bad if she got to one of them first? She'd known others like her, and many didn't care who they hurt. The gate of the wagon dropped, and the hooded figure took Amber by a rope and dragged her to the gallows. When the hooded man reached for the noose, Cardinal Adam put a hand up to stop him. No, this one will burn, he ordered. Amber struggled to break the rope binding her. She jammed her tongue against the gag, frantically working to get her voice into the open air. They couldn't burn her. Parliament banned burning people alive. It banned murdering women for witchcraft, too. Yet, if the cardinal believed God wanted her dead, what did a piece of paper from a group of men a thousand miles away matter? You can't burn, a man's voice beneath the hood said, cut off by a roaring crowd. Our crops are dead as God has willed because of the evil that walks among us. We must purge this evil in fire. God demands it. Amber worked at the gag with her tongue. Wood appeared from nowhere in the crowd as if they'd prepared for the opportunity. Cardinal Adam nodded as the wood piled at the base of the gallows. Amber thought he fought back a smile. He took her rope, waved the hooded man away, and dragged her into the crowd to a chair. He forced her down and tied her to the chair. Amber saw Jessica's body still dangling, looking straight at her, accusing her of not doing enough to save her life. People in the crowd moved the wood to the base of the chair. She smelled the sweat cake deeply into their clothing. She looked down and smelled pine, strong and resinous. It would burn quickly. The crowd parted and Cardinal Adam walked through holding a torch. May God have mercy on your soul, he said and threw the torch on the wood. The flames caught immediately. Amber squirmed. She couldn't move the chair, and if she tipped it, she'd fall into the flames. Her toes burned. She cried. Her tongue worked furiously on the gag. Her leg burned, and her face felt the heat. The gag loosened slightly, and she found air for her voice. The hateful boy that had cursed her, what felt like moments ago, was crying his head buried in his father's legs. Amber called her magic and drained the life from herself, using the power to send the images of Freddy's death to them. In a blink, they lived those moments with Freddy and his mother. The crowd silenced as Amber closed her eyes. All right, that's the end of that story. Uh, this is actually, I wrote this one first, which is why I'm, I'm giving it to you first. There's uh, three parts to this story. So I wrote I wrote a part before this, and then I wrote the story after this. So the story of, of her son dying, which is what Amber was accused of. Um, I actually wrote that story, which I'll be putting out soon. So you'll get to read what happened before. And then I wrote uh, a story about what's what happened after Amber's death. Uh, they're both also just two short stories. So it was interesting there. Um, again, in this story, the minds, the thought process for me was uh, on energy. Um, I thought it would be cool to kind of explore what would happen if, you know, energy was based on, on the uh, age of the person that you're taking it from. So I didn't explore it too much because it's a short story, so I just kind of touched on it. There's definitely enough probably for a, a novel idea here. Of, of taking energy from the young to get the most power and, and from the old to get the least amount of power and, and kind of playing with that a bit. But that was the idea I went with on this. And and this is a story that I got. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to get the next couple of stories or, or even, uh, you know, hear future stories, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>